spirit of those wild hippie days, could you all be seated, please? To those of you who arrived a little late, um, the first half was really good. It's great. Um, and I am sorry, sorry about the tunnel being closed, but you know, people who live on the North Shore just have to deal. So um, we are recording tonight. Um, so there's a couple of cameras and a audio. Hopefully, it'll be good enough quality to cut together and make some sense afterwards. Copies will be available, three hundred dollars each, and um, the proceeds will go to the Susie Carter um, University Masters Fund. She's going to enrol Masters in costume design. Um, anyway, uh, we will see what we can do about making it all available. Kelvin has also given me a hard drive with the archive on it. He says it's all on there. He says he can if it doesn't. It's a little, you know, it's like. Bottle, like a matchbox, you know, it's all, it's all in there. Um, so, I was thinking about maybe trying to get a website going that might have some of those documents and things available. Thank you, Megan. So, anyone who can help with that, let's maybe talk afterwards about what we could do to do um, beyond the um, the book of faces. All very well, but uh, to get to the documents and the, the posters and the programs and the recordings would be would be fantastic. Um, and Kelvin, I want to congratulate Kelvin in particular for the work that he's done as our unofficial yep. archivist. <laughs> Kelvin around the Without Kelvin, this really all would be lost. It would all be gone and all just a shrug that, you know, it got damaged and got thrown out. So thank you, Kelvin. Thanks a lot. Um, so let's get underway the second uh, half of this concert tonight. This is a poem that um, goes back again to the beginning of or the earlier days of this uh, venture. This is um, a poem that was written by an American um, who was out here teaching, and I met him when he was teaching high school. There was a lot of American teachers at that time in our schools. His name was Doug Schill. Uh, and he wrote a poem uh, which he called To Lawrence Ferlinghetti. And this was a poem that was used a lot after the fleeting touch. So the fleeting touch, as I said before, was about 1973. This was used for many workshops and probably a lot of you got handed it by, like Jack Mannix and said, here, read this. And um, so um, to provoke those memories, um, I'll read it again. Um, Jack Mannix is here tonight, by the way, so you should say hello to him if you get the chance. An empty auditorium is filled with phantom voices, a soprano, a piano, a bassoon, practicing upstairs or behind or below. Sounds make curious syncopations, pattern, patterns heard only by me. So I am waiting for you, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, in this hollow box. Because of a girl six years ago and 10,000 miles ago, who lit my cigarette with a lighter that read in scratch letters, even in heaven they don't sing all the time. She went away and took her lighter, but the lines stayed on without the poem, making uncued entrances in my vacant head, bouncing like the voices and the music are now. So you will be here in an hour or so, and I've come through strange avenues across the peaceful oceans to sit here in Sydney, trying to remember her name while names mixed with voices and music, a senseless song without a beat. I will be waiting in an hour for you, soprano, piano, bassoon, names and faces, the years and times how does it fit? Will you tell me?
Jeffrey Pollard. Jeffrey and I went to primary school together. I think we even went to preschool together. Um, we're going to invite back uh, Richard Harlan to do another uh, of his um, dark comedies. Um, no comedy. Just dark. Um, Richard and his amazing steampunk guitar um, will uh, favour us, and Zoe will will add keep uh, vocal excellence. Keep talking, somebody said to me. So this song, this song was in a uh, concert that we did in about 1980, 70, 78, perhaps 78, 79, something like that. Um, and. Um, I think it was Terry that introduced us to Richard in the first instance, and um, Richard joined us for that particular concert in the Chapter House, and did um, two extraordinary songs. Uh, we heard Outer Springs of Currents, and uh, uh, this, but this next song is, uh, I think, his masterwork, which. Um, and uh, how are we going, Mark? We're still rewiring. Okay. Um, we'll. Um, Pass on to these guys. They can, Richard, you can tell us a bit about the song yourself and where it all came from. So, Richard Harlan. Thanks. Actually, I don't think I have ever said this before. Uh, all the performances we did at Pack Folk, I never mentioned it. Francis Barrington McRae was actually written about a guy that I knew at university. And Francis Barrington McRae was not his real name. Uh, he didn't obviously do all the things that. He does in the song, but he had a brilliant mind. So um, I'm not going to say the name, but in my mind, I'm thinking of him now. And so he's going to do the high notes for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Suitable song for it. <laughs> Richard Harland, a, um, is he a man or is he a monster? Who knows? <laughs> Fantastic. Richard and I are actually going to do a little poem now. Um, Ron van der Maiden, this is your bit. I, um, I sent Ron an email, I suppose, about I don't know, 20 minutes ago, I said, Ron, do you want to do this thing? Yeah. And, uh, you gave him plenty of notes. I gave him plenty of notes. What do you reckon? So, anyway, this is, um, in the spirit of not being fully prepared, this is um, just a bit of fun. We did, I, I remember doing this at Fast Colours down at the Australian Music Centre, and I remember doing it as a, um, a solo piece. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that, but I just did. There were two, two lights, and uh, the, the, uh, Peter Az or someone sort of flicked between these two lights, and I did both parts. And then I think it was Zoe said when we were rehearsing, she said, yeah, and you used to do it with Ron. I said, yeah, right. <laughs> and I, well, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yes, I did do it with Ron. So I, I sent him that email, and um, by the time it had got through the university's, you know, spam filter, it was too late. Um, so, Ron, thank you for coming tonight, and I hope you enjoy this rendition. Richard has stepped in, kindly stepped in, to, um, to do the part of uh, Rosencrantz, and this is uh, from Tom Stoppard's play, Rosencrantz and Goldstein Theatre. Mm, it's dark, isn't it? Well, not for night. No, not for night. Dark for day? Yes, it's dark for day. Oh, we must have sailed north. Of course. Of course. The land of the midnight sun, that is. Of course. I think it's getting light. Well, not for night. <laughs> this far north? Unless we're off course. Yes, it's, it's lighter than it was. It'll be night soon, this far north. Oh, I suppose we'll have to go to sleep then. Tired? No. I don't think I'd take to it. Sleep all night, can't see a thing all day. Those Eskimos must have a quiet life. When? What? I, I thought you... I've lost all capacity for disbelief. I'm not sure if I could even rise to a little gentle scepticism. Well, shall we stretch our legs? I don't feel like stretching my legs. I'll stretch them for you if you like. No. We could stretch each other's legs. That way we wouldn't have to go anywhere. No, somebody might come in. In where? Out here. In, out here? On deck. Hmm. Nice bit of planking, that. Yes, I'm very fond of boats myself. I like the way they're contained. You don't have to worry about which way to go or whether to go at all. The question doesn't arise because you're on a boat, aren't you? Boats are safe areas in a game of tag. The players will hold their position until the music starts. I think I'll spend most of my life on boats. Yeah, very healthy. Well, it's free on a boat. What's it like? Rough. I think I'm going to be sick. But other side, I think. <laughs> thanks to Ron and thanks to Richard and thanks to Tom Stoppard who didn't even know he was coming tonight. So there we are. We never paid any royalties to anyone. It's a good thing we had so much fantastic original music. We <laughs> could have afforded the rest. <laughs> Again, according to, I, I, I left on the table some uh, sort of song sheets and uh, programs and things. So if you haven't passed those around, there's a few programs from Sound Travel and uh, Sound of People and Fleeting Touch and, and so on. And uh, they make interesting reading. I had no idea we did Gibby Shelter. Why is there Gibby Shelter, the Rolling Stones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Um, so, yeah. Camille said that high, high note. I remember, as David Ashley was saying, uh, he remembers stuff that didn't even happen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was there when it didn't happen. <laughs> um, I was waiting outside when it didn't happen. Okay, so... If anyone feels the uh, urge to get up and...
form a very straight line and walk incredibly slowly and then just... Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I think just some of you know what I'm talking about. Just gently open up whatever you're wearing. It could be quite interesting at this stage, couldn't it? Okay. Jeffrey composed this and I uh, co-opted it and I can remember um, being at uh, 63 Hereford Street, Glee, Bradley and Svetlana and others were there and I had to do a show and I couldn't come up with a name and this was down in Leeton I think and I sort of devised this show and I knew there was this um, uh, a bit of music that I wanted to use but I didn't have a name for the show and so we kind of had one of those sessions where you think, you know, what about uh, I don't know, Hungry Jacks? No, that doesn't work. What about uh, McDonald? No, that doesn't work. What, what, come on, come on, come on. And, and, we, and Bradley, Bradley made the suggestion when we uh, were talking about the show.
to, to uh, and the suggestion he made was call it uh, Planet Rise, uh, which is a beautiful concept for, um, for big thinkers. And uh, that was what the show became. And uh, we used in it this um, beautiful piece of music that Jeffrey composed called Earthrise. So I never knew anything about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> Jeffrey got no royalties on um, the, the, the song that the she and I played a little earlier uh, was named Mnemonic, uh, which is um, something which helps you to remember an age memory. Um, I just I just compose them. I don't I don't actually name them ever. So Mnemonic was Terry's name for that tune, and now I hear that. Earthrise was George's name <laughs> this year. Isn't that wonderful? experience it's been for me to sing these songs of Terry's and that one of Wayne's and you know when I first heard these songs when I was 15 years old and went to the Fast Colors, Fast Colors concert at the um, down there photography center I think in the rocks with Jeffrey Branch dragging me along saying tell your mum you're just going to go and see this concert it's fine you know put in a call from the public phone on George Street and I'm not coming here until later. Can you come pick me up when I get the bus home? Yeah, that sort of thing. And um, it was just, it changed my life in an incredibly um, profound way. And just, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't believe the beauty in that room and the, and the strangeness and the, the, you know, just the uniqueness, the difference to my ordinary life at school. It was just... A whole other world that Pat opened up, but especially this this concert this night with Terry and Wayne and Jeff was probably there. I don't remember meeting him that night, but um, Camille Gardner and Michelle Thompson and it was just um, and and Svetlana was flitting behind. You know, she was actually reciting Five Bells, that piece that poem I did before, and um, her beautiful voice coupled with that poem, I'll never forget. So thank you all for coming tonight and thanks Susie and Mark for helping us have it here.
here for allowing us to be here and convening. And once again, thank you to these beautiful blokes for their beautiful songs yep. and for yep. Greg for playing such beautiful guitar. Okay. We can't do this by ourselves, and no. you all know that. So. <clears throat> But they are rocket names upon his shoulder. He's a spectre in the night. He's the clown of a beach. Between the space time. Greg, Greg Johnson is singing this one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sagging like many other things in the room. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Our mothers oh, call a spade a spade, for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're old friends, and I mean old friends. I was one of the youngest ones there, and I'm 53, so come on. <laughs> we signed non disclosure agreements. Still G. Still the G shape.
Thank you. Oh, we play all these double choices. Oh, so it's awesome. It's awesome. Yes, we'll remember that, they said. We did it just exactly the same as we said. We did. It's fine, it's great. That's exactly how I remember it. That is no country for old men. The young in one another's arms, birds in the trees, those dying generations at their song, the salmon falls, the mackerel crowded seas, fish, flesh, all fowl, commend all summer long, whatever is begotten, born and dies. Caught in that sensual music, all neglect monuments of unaging intellect. Sons of anywhere, come in and see the show. The simple, nimble fairy folk, the clumps of callous stone. Design yourself your cake of glass, iron stones that sing, and you can't stand still and you want to go by. You can't stop now because your heart is on fire. Roll on.
gentlemen from the far side, Brent Thompson, Zoe Karidis, Terry Darling, and Jeffrey Pollard. Thank you again to Susie and Mark for the venue for all the hard work and putting the show together. Thank you very much and thank you for coming. George Penix, ladies and gentlemen. We've got, we've got a little encore for you. Join us. <laughs> you lead off all <laughs> Tonight at 5 to 8. Okay. Carol and Valley. One more time. Right, 
moment, just laying on it. Do you remember Get Good? I do. Yeah. Oh, you play? Not to play. No, not playing. <laughs> no, you keep changing. You remember it's good. Jerry, it's good. I can't good. sing the song. Oh, yeah. good. 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 It's not like serving lessons, it's just singing. Suzanne can't seem to save her life, apparently. But um, she can save us. Oh, God, no. Yeah, I've got a good thank you. I just <laughs> <laughs> I need to be able to see something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sad misfortune to lose one of his feet. 
a rabbit brain man just sitting off at the knee. You'll recognize the spider as he walks a bit lopsided, you see. Poor old sailor and pain, fancy being a spider with a wooden leg. Can't run, can't even dance. The bugs can hear you coming, so you don't stand a chance. <laughs> he came upon a little girl eating curds and whey. He hobbled up beside her just to frighten her away. She stood up quickly, screamed out loud, and looked around for a stick. He tried to run, but it couldn't be done, and she squashed him with a brick. Oh. Poor old Selma and a pig, fancy being a spider with a wooden leg. Can't run, can't even dance. The bugs can hear you coming, so you don't stand a chance. I know, I think the last verse was a great ending, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Coming to my father, said our spiders and flies. They doubled up with laughter as the tears rolled from their eyes. His poor old web was full of holes, the insect flew right through. For weaving a web with a wooden leg is pretty hard to do. Poor old seven and a leg, fancy being a spider with a wooden leg. Can't run, can't even dance. The bugs can hear you coming, so you don't stand a chance. Poor old Sierra, fancy being a spider with a wooden leg. Can't run, can't even dance. The bugs can hear you coming, so you don't stand a chance. Last verse, I should have taken this. No, Jeff, where are you? You coward. Where are you? Where yeah, you run up. I got to sing two songs of Mr. Squiggle's 40th birthday. And this was one of them. I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really yes. yeah. Oh, good on you, Jeff. Yeah. It's quite similar song. It's got moving lyrics. Yeah. My brother found a jellyfish, we thought we'd call him Fred. He had a wiggle for a middle and a wobble for a head. Yeah. Ready? I was covering with Yep. Rest of the key. Yeah, correct. Off you go. Cheese. Don't mind me. My brother found a jellyfish, we thought we'd call him Fred. He had a wiggle for a middle and a wobble for a head. While we all owned a skeleton, Fred was boneless through and through. He couldn't do a lot of things we boldly both could do, because there were no bones. <laughs> no bones about it, there were no bones. He seemed to do without it, he just drifted along. But what could go wrong with no bones? Now cows have bones to hold them up. A scarecrow has a stick, an insect has a heart outside that seems to do the trick. But poor old Fred the jellyfish was boneless through and through. He couldn't do a lot of things we thought we folk could do, cause there were no bones. No bones about it, there were no bones. He seemed to do without it, he just kept it along. For what could go wrong with no bones? After dinner, and keep that on the shade. The cows and bones to hold them up. The scarecrow has a stick. An insect has a heart outside that seems to do the trick. The poor old friend, the jellyfish, was boneless through and through. He couldn't do a lot of things we bony folk could do. Cause there were no bones. No bones about it. There were no bones. He seemed to do without it. He just took it along. What could go wrong with no bones? One more time. I said, no bones. No bones about it. There were no bones. He seemed to do without it. He just drifted along. But what could go wrong with no bones?
Punch and he's off. Break it up. <laughs> 